Convolutional neural networks make decisions using complex feature hierarchies. It's difficult to unveil these using methods like occlusion, SHAP, or GradCam, as these focus on regions of important pixels. Guided backpropagation addresses this by visualizing specific features that have contributed to a model's output. It does this by adjusting the standard backpropagation process to only pass positive gradients that have contributed to a prediction. Hi, I'm Connor and welcome to ADO. In this video, we're going to understand how guided backpropagation can give us such intuitive saliency maps. That is by understanding both the theory and intuition behind ReLU masking. In a later video, we'll apply the method from scratch using PyTorch hooks. So keep an eye out for that one if you want a more practical understanding of the method. Before we get started, I'd like to mention that this lesson is part of a wider explainable AI course for computer vision. It's completely free and you can find a link to it in the description. You'll find the article version for this lesson as well as many coding resources. There's also a paid version of the course which I'll talk about at the end of this video. Before we start, let's clarify a few terms. When I talk about activations, I mean the output from any layer in the network during the forward pass. This could be the raw output from convolutional layers or after we pass that to an activation function. Similarly, a feature map is one channel in the output of a convolutional layer or after that layer has been passed to an activation function. An element is one unit or pixel in a feature map. We can talk about activated feature maps or activated elements if they have been populated by a forward pass. However, we can also just refer to them as feature maps or elements. Whether they are activated or not should be clear from the context. Okay, so to understand guided backprop, we're going to start with the standard backpropagation procedure for a single layer in a convolutional neural network. This consists of a set of kernels K and biases B. During the forward pass, the input to the layer will be a set of feature maps or an input image. The output is also a set of feature maps. During the backwards pass, grad in is the gradient of the loss with respect to the layer's input. Grad out is the gradient of the loss with respect to the layer's output. We have labeled these using the same variable names as the hook functions that you will see in the Python lesson. This should help connect the theory to the practical application. So during the forward pass, the layer will apply the kernels and biases to the input to produce a new set of feature maps as the output. Without going into much detail, during the backwards pass, grad out is passed from the next layer in the network to calculate grad in. Grad in is then used to update the kernels and biases of this current layer. For guided backprop, we are not interested in this final step that is updating the parameters. We only want to visualize the gradients flowing through the network for one input image. When doing this, we make one adjustment to the standard backpropagation procedure. That is to only allow positive gradients to flow through ReLU activation layers. We call this process ReLU masking. To understand ReLU masking, we need to introduce the concept of a guidance signal. This is anything that helps reduce the noise in a saliency map or guides the visualization towards features that have positively contributed to a model's prediction. With standard backprop, ReLU layers already introduce one guidance signal. That is, if the input from the forward pass is negative, the gradients from the backwards pass are set to zero. Really masking adds an additional guidance signal. That is, if the gradient from the backwards pass is negative, it is set to zero. To understand how this works, we're going to dive pretty deep into the maths. 
But don't worry, at the end I'll give a more intuitive explanation for how this all works. Yeah, you can see the process for standard backprop for a ReLU activation layer. During the forward pass, the input is feature maps from the previous convolutional layer. The output will be those same feature maps, but with all negative values set to zero. Using the chain rule, we can express grad in with this function. That is the derivative of the loss with respect to the ReLU function multiplied by the derivative of the ReLU function with respect to the input. Also, that latter derivative of the ReLU function can be simplified to an indicator function. If the input is positive, the value is one. Otherwise, the value is zero. This is the guidance signal during standard backprop that we spoke about. We only pass gradients through a ReLU activation function where the input into the function is positive. This does not mean we only pass positive gradients. This is because the derivative of the loss with respect to the input can be both positive or negative regardless of whether the input is positive or negative. So with guided backpropagation, we introduce an additional guidance signal. This will set all negative gradients to zero. These modified gradients are then propagated through the network. And we propagate them all the way from the output to the, the input um, to create the saliency map showing important features in the input. But in the Python lecture, we'll, we'll see other ways that we can propagate. That's like by looking at propagating them through the network um, and seeing them at different layers in the network and also propagating them starting from specific elements in a layer. A final note, when we do guided backpropagation, we are typically not interested in the gradients of the loss, but the gradients of an output logit for a given class C. Usually, this is the class with the highest logit. To start the backwards pass from this logit, we set the derivative of the loss with respect to the logit to one and all the other derivatives to zero. The ReLU masking process is then the same as before. To summarize, guided backpropagation works by adjusting the ReLU activation functions of convolutional neural networks so that all negative gradients passed during backwards propagation will be set to zero. These layers will now suppress gradients in two ways, those where the input is negative and those where the gradients are negative. Now, let's try to understand why this trick works so well. There is no mathematical or fundamental theorem for why guided backpropagation should produce better saliency maps than simply visualizing the gradients of standard backpropagation. In the paper that presented the method, the researchers compared it to standard backprop and deconvolution, two alternative methods to creating similar saliency maps. They observed that guided backpropagation produced cleaner visualization. The intuition behind this can also be found in the paper, and I'm reading directly from that now. We call this method guided backpropagation because it adds an additional guidance signal from the higher layers to usual backpropagation. This prevents backward flow of negative gradients corresponding to the neurons which decrease the activation of the higher layer unit we aim to visualize. What they refer to neurons in this case, we refer to as elements of feature maps. As discussed, standard backprop already has one guidance signal. That is only the gradients of positive activated feature map elements are propagated. This reduces the number of irrelevant gradients as we only pass those for elements that have increased the prediction for the logit of the target class. However, we still pass negative gradients. In standard backpropagation, negative gradients play a crucial role in decreasing the activation of elements that are not associated with the target class. But when it comes to guided backprop, we are only interested in the gradients associated with the target class. So by suppressing negative gradients, we can reduce noise in our saliency map and create cleaner visualizations. Intuitively, this makes sense. However, the lack of solid theoretical foundation 
is one of the weaknesses of guided backpropagation. It can lead to cases where we produce saliency maps that are incorrect or misleading. Um, and this is something we discuss in a little bit more detail on the lesson on integrated gradients. As mentioned in the next lesson, we will apply guided backprop using Python and PyTorch hooks. This will allow us to compute and interpret guided backpropagation gradients in three different ways. That is by looking at the gradients of a target logit with respect to the input, a target logit with respect to the intermediate feature maps, and an element in a feature map with respect to the input. Each of these approaches offer a unique benefit when it comes to interpreting a model. As I mentioned, this video is part of a larger course where I go into detail on explainable AI methods for computer vision. This includes methods like occlusion, SHAP, GradCam, guided backpropagation, deep lift, and integrated gradients. You can access all of the course content for free, but there's also a paid version of the course. With that, you'll get access to a certificate for the course, quizzes, all of the videos ad-free, and an ebook, which will allow you to access all of the course content offline.